G'day. How you going? God bless you. In today's Bible study, I'm going to be teaching Jesus' seven I Ams. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And Jesus said, I am the true vine. I'm going to be teaching these seven uh, I am's in order from the Gospel of John. And I'm going to be teaching you them with a mnemonic. The, the mnemonic is a system such as a pattern of letters, ideas or associations which assist in remembering something. So the mnemonic is B L D S R W V. That's B L D S R W V. So these seven lep- these seven letters represent each of the seven I am's, and they're in order. Now the acronym. Uh, The acronym is Bleeds Red Wave. Bleeds Red Wave. That's what you need to remember. And if you can remember that, then you can remember the seven I Ams of Jesus. So B-L-D-S-R-W-V. B-L-D-S-R-W-V. Bleeds Red Wave. So, um, Jesus said, I am the bread of life in John chapter 6. John chapter 6 verse 35, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So this is just after Jesus fed the 5,000. We have in John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15, uh, an account of this miracle where Jesus feeds the 5,000. And then... He he after that, he says about being the bread of life. He also says, I am the bread which came down from heaven. He also says, I am am that bread of life. And he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. So what does it mean when he says, I am the bread? What does that mean? Well, in verse 51, he says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever, and the bread that I give, and the bread that I will give, is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. So he's giving his, the, the, when he says, I am the bread, he's saying uh, that is his flesh, and, he give, and the bread that I will give is my flesh. So if we go, if we go to John chapter 1, uh, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then if we go to verse 14 of John chapter 1, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory and the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So the... The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is the Word of God in the flesh. And when he says, I am the bread, he's saying that we should eat that bread. We should eat the Word of God. Sorry, when when he's saying, I am the bread of life, I am the bread, I am the bread that came down from heaven, he is saying that uh, he is the Word of God and we should eat the Word of God. That's what he's saying. So, 
the next thing he said was in John chapter 8 about being the light of the world. <clears throat> so John chapter 8 verse 12, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So Jesus is the bread, and he is also the light. He is the light of the world. <clears throat> All right, so <clears throat> um, the world is in darkness. The world needs Jesus. The word, the world needs the word of God, and as Christians, we are to share this aspect of Jesus. He is the bread of life. He is the light of the world. Uh, John chapter ten. So all these I am's are in the Gospel of John. John chapter 10, verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. <clears throat> okay, so he's saying he's the door. <clears throat> he's saying he's the door, and he is the door of the sheep. So Jesus is saying he is the bread, he is the light, and he is the door. So that's B-L-D. And then he says in verse in chapter 10, in verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Jesus died on the cross for the sin of man. He died on the cross for as a shepherd for his sheep, for his flock. Uh, verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and I and am known of mine. So Jesus, once again, the, the acronym is B-L-D-S-R-W-V, bleed, bleeds red wave. So think of Jesus on the cross and he is bleeding and he is bleeding like a wave of blood. Um, if you've watched the Passion uh, movie, by Mel Gibson, <clears throat> there's a scene in that in that um, in that movie where he's being whipped, and uh, yeah, blood is just go going everywhere. And um, we we know from we know from. I'm just making a mental note of where I'm up to as I sidetrack here. We know that Jesus fed the 5,000. We know that he is able to multiply things. We know that um, he fed, the, you know, he only had, <clears throat> if I just go back to John chapter 6, um, get my actual reference here. <clears throat> um, So they had five barley loaves, and they were able to feed 5,000 men, I believe it is. <clears throat> not, you know, 5,000 men, not counting women and children, I believe. I'm just trying to read that, scan for that. So verse 10 says, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. So I, my understanding is um, from other scriptures that they don't count women and children in this count. Um, although it doesn't appear to be the case here where they specify not counting women and children. But I believe in the other Gospels that is the case. I'll um, make a note 
of that in, in the video behind me in the green screen. So, uh, Jesus is able to multiply things. Um, in another case, instance, in another case, they had um, some fish. Oh, was, in this case as well, there was two small fishes. Uh, so this is, um, there is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. But what are they among so many? So he multiplied the bread as well as the fish. So theoretically, if Jesus is able to multiply uh, you know, bread and fish, he should be able to, he's, you know, like he's bleeding on the cross. Blood should, you know, um, some would think that he might bleed out, right? There was, there was that much whipping going on. And we, we see in the movie and the passion of the Christ. Um, and, and by the way, um, I was just thinking, <laughs> side tracking yet again, um, about Acts chapter, one, I believe it is in the King ja in the King James Bible. I'll just go to this. <clears throat> um, verse three, Acts chapter one, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So that's where the movie Passion of the Christ gets its title. I believe that's what I understand to be the case. Verse 3, where it says, after his passion. So the passion of the Christ was that he gave up his life for the sheep. So, uh, so going back to the movie, um, you see Mary mopping up the blood in that, you know, that scene where she's, you know, there's blood draining everywhere and she's mopping it all up. So then he's, you know, Nailed to the cross, the cross has stood up, and blood is just dripping off him down the cross, um, down the post of the cross into the ground. Blood would be all over that place. Now, like I say, you know, Christians believe that um, Jesus performed these miracles. And that he multiplied the bread, he multiplied the fishes. So, theoretically, the amount of blood that was coming out of him would have been an endless supply until he died, until his heart stopped pumping. Now, where does blood come from? Blood comes from the marrow in your bones. That's where blood is produced from. So, um, the reason I'm saying this is just to give more impetus to this um, mnemonic, B-L-D-S-R-W-V, bleeds red wave. Jesus bled a wave of blood, so to speak. Um, I'm giving more impetus to the, mnemo to the mnemonic, um, B-L-D-S-R-W-V. So that's... All the seven I am's of Jesus in order, and they come from the Gospel of John. So, uh, there's this man called Ron Wyatt. He's a Seventh day Adventist, and I'm not a Seventh day Adventist. I don't claim to be of any denomination. I just uh, follow Jesus. Uh, but he was a Seventh Day Adventist, and he discovered a number of things. He discovered uh, the Ark, the Noah's Ark. He discovered you know, what is known as the Darupna site. Excuse me. Uh, he just you know what what he believes to be the final resting place of the Ark near the Mount near near the Mounts of Ararat. Uh, on one of the mounts near Mount Ararat, I, I believe is, is the correct terminology there. So the ark came to rest near Mount Ararat, and he went to a location known as the Jerubna site, and he believes that the remains there are the ark. And I believe that to be true. Um, there's a video that talks about um, Sodom and Gomorrah, or Gomorrah, however you want to say that. 
and they found um, sulfur-encrusted uh, rock that, w- that it was, and the, the rocks had isometric shapes, so they were at right angles to each other. So it's believed that these were man-made structures. They weren't, they basically, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, fire and brimstone or sulfur, rained down upon these two cities and destroyed them. And that's in uh, Genesis. That story is in, that account is in the book of Genesis. Um, I think it's Genesis chapter 19. <clears throat> around about there, Genesis chapter 24, somewhere around about there. So Sodom and Gomorrah, um, fire and brimstone rained down upon those cities and the structures became encased in, in the brimstone. And there's evidence of that near the Dead Sea, which is where you know the Dead Sea um, became a Dead Sea because of... Um, the fire and brimstone that was rained down upon it, because Lake Gomorrah, it, what used the Dead Sea used to be known as Lake Gomorrah. So, fire and brimstone rained down upon uh, those two cities, and there's evidence to suggest that the structures there aren't just ordinary rock, but they're buildings that have been encrusted in brimstone or been enshrined in brim, in brimstone. Because they the structures um, uh, have have outer edges that are at right angles to each other, which are which is unnatural for a natural you know for a rock formation. So that's the evidence there for that um, find that he made. Um, so the Bible is true. That's that's why I'm talking about this. And Ron Wyatt um, found a number of things. So he found. Noah's Ark, he found the location for, um, for, for where the buildings were, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and uh, they tested the, sol- the, the rock there and it was sulfur. Um, he also found at, um, I think it's the Nuweba Crossing, what is known as the, the Nuweba Crossing of the Red Sea. So there's a land bridge and they discovered the remains, you know, encrusted remains, you know, they were encrusted by marine life um, of chariot wheels. And um, so what happened with the Red Sea crossing in Exodus chapter 12, I think it is, somewhere about there, um, the chariots that were chasing the children of Israel, they came through the Red Sea as well. And the water fell in over the top of them and they died, they perished. And then their chariots were left behind and they, um, there was evidence that they're still there. So Ron White discovered that. Um, There's two other things that I recall him discovering, um, which bring, uh, apparently Solomon had set up two pillars where he believed the Red Red Sea Crossing was. I'm a little bit vague on this, so that helped Ron Wyatt discover um, the location. Um, and anchors for Noah's Ark. There's these um, rocks that have a hole cut in the, the top of them, which believe were um, anchors or ballasts, ballasts for Noah's Ark. So that's just some more finds there that he had. And the main the one the one that I'm I'm tr- I'm getting to is apparently he was in Israel and he he I recall him saying in a video that I watched um the he he felt as though the Holy Spirit or, or, or you know some something made him pull it, put out his arm and a voice said to him that's jeremiah Jeremiah's grotto I believe is is um what what it was I, I'm not 
100% on that. I'd have to verify my facts there. But um, it's believed, see, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, we've got Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom and Indiana Jones in the Raider, Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Crystal Skull and all that. These, ma- these movies that were made by um, Spielberg, I believe, um, are based somewhat in fact. They are a movie of fiction, but they are based um, on a little bit of fact there because the Ark had disappeared. Um, in history, the Ark had, had disappeared, the, the Ark of the Covenant. And it's believed that uh, Jeremiah had taken the, uh, taken the Ark and hidden it in a cave. And that cave just happened to be at Calvary or Golgotha, which is the place of the skull. It's a location that looks like a skull. And Jeremiah hid uh, this Ark of the Covenant in a cave underneath the location where Jesus died. So, Ron Wyatt discovered the Ark of the Covenant, and in this in, in this cave there was blood, um, and it was tested. And I just watched a YouTube video where Ron Wyatt testifies um, about <clears throat> when they had the blood tested. They had it tested in an Israeli lab- laboratory, and it only had 24 chromosomes. The blood had 24 chromosomes. And he was saying in the video that when they test the blood um, of pharaohs, it's dried blood, it's dead blood. You can't, you can't, um, he was saying, like he, he's back, he's, um, he was an anesthetist, I think, or, um, you know, someone who administers, um, uh, Drugs to someone to put them to sleep. Um, you know, an anesthesiologist. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's how you say that. So that was his, that was the sort of work background he had. So he was sort of like a nurse. And so he was familiar with medical terminology and that sort of thing. So apparently, this blood that was discovered in this cave um, only had 24 chromosomes. So Normally, you're meant to have 46, 23, um, what is it, 23 from your mother and 23 from your father. So it's believed that 23 chromosomes came from Mary and the 24th chromosome, a Y chromosome, came from the Heavenly Father. So uh, there's a video that you can watch to get the details more accurately. <laughs> Um, bit sketchy there on the details, but anyway, the point is, the point is, Jesus was on the cross, and he bled a wave of blood. Um, blood was just pouring down the cross. Now I've heard someone say to me, "I don't believe this is true because I don't believe enough blood would have been in Jesus." Because there's what is there, seven or eight liters of blood in a human body. Um, for the blood to travel all the way down the cross. Um, through a crack, down to this cave. Um, He he doesn't believe it to be true because uh, he doesn't believe that there would have been enough blood in a human body. But Jesus' blood was special. So apparently when they had this blood tested, the blood was alive. It came back to life. It was dry blood. They put it into a saline solution and swished it around, and they were able to test and get chromosomes from it. So apparently you're only able to test blood that's alive, blood that's fresh to get chromosomes. So um, now more credence to this story. Um, I, was, I was just thinking about um, dinosaur tissue. They've found, they've discovered dinosaur remains that have um, uh, t- blood tissue in them. Um, I know that's another thing, but there's these discoveries, you know, like um, 
so-called science believes that dinosaur fossils are millions of years old and it would be impossible for a dinosaur fossil to have um, tissue in it, you know, uh, to have um, you know, the ra- anything that's fossilised is turned into rock. So, or, you know, is mineralized. So, f- for a dinosaur uh, fossil to have blood tissue is extraordinary. So, just, just giving more credence to what I'm saying. Um, you know, God is a worker of miracles. And we have Jesus feeding the 5,000, uses five barley loaves and two fish, and he feeds 5,000 men. It's possible, it's theoretically possible, if Jesus was able to perform such miracles, that there was a never-ending supply of his blood trickling down the cross, through a crack in the ground, down to the Ark of the Covenant, which in the Old Testament, um, blood was sprinkled upon the Ark of the Covenant as an atonement for sin. So all this makes sense biblically. And Ron Wyatt discovered all this, all these uh, as I previously mentioned, and he discovered the Ark of the Covenant, it's believed, and this blood. So um, this acronym that I'm teaching you um, is very significant. Now, the first plague in, um, in, the, in the book of Exodus when the children of Israel were coming out of um, Egypt, the first plague is when they turn the river Nile into blood. So there's, there's another connotation there to um, the, the, the mnemonic or the acronym. So B-L-D-S-R-W-V, bleeds red wave. So Jesus bled a, a river of red. <laughs> Jesus bled a wave of blood is what I'm trying to say on the cross. So we have seven I ams. We have Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door. So we'll go to John chapter 10 and verse 7. He says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Uh, Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if if any man enter in, he shall be saved and, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Um. So Jesus said, I am the door. All right, so we can, it says here we can go in and out and find pasture. So uh, also in John chapter 10, he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And then we have John chapter 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. So we have B-L-D-S-R, bleeds red wave. Jesus said he is the bread. I am the bread. Jesus said I am the light. Jesus said I am the door. Jesus said I am the shepherd. Jesus said I am the resurrection and the life. And if we go to John chapter 14, Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So that's where the W comes into it. I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said. And then we go to John chapter 15. In verse 1, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. And verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. So Jesus is the vine. So we have seven I ams. Now there's, there is in um, John chapter 8, another time when Jesus says, 
I am, and that was in regards to um, Abraham. He says in verse chapter 8, verse 58 of John, Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So that's the eighth I am, but um, in this sense, he's not saying I am a certain thing. So that's why we specify that there's seven I ams, but uh, technically there's eight, because he says before Abraham was, I am. So they're the seven I ams of Jesus. So the acronym or the, the mnemonic is B-L-D-S-R-W-B, Bleeds Red Wave. So you can remember from this picture in your mind that you should have now, Jesus on the cross, he's bleeding a wave of blood. So Bleeds Red Wave is the acronym B-L-D-S-R-W-V. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus said, I am the shepherd. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus said, I am the vine. So uh, you can remember all seven of these I ams. Now, you can also remember um, what chapters in John they came from. John chapter 6 is where we have Jesus feeding the, the 5,000 and in that um, we have Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. John chapter 8, John chapter 10, John chapter 11, John chapter 15, I believe it is. Uh, John chapter 14 and then John chapter 15. So uh, we, we've got 6, 8, 10, 11, 14, 15. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's John, John chapter ten, where he says, "I am the door of the sheep," where he says, "I am the shepherd." So we have a doubling up of "I am"s in John chapter ten, and also of note when he says, uh, "I am the resurrection and the life." That's just after. Lazarus has died, and then he says, I am the resurrection and the life, and then he raises Lazarus from the dead. So it can give you an in by remembering these things, you can, it can give you an insight into the chronology of the book of John. Uh, help, it'll help you remember the book of John and where to find things in the book of John. So um, it goes 6, 8, 10, and then 11, 14, 15. 6, 8, 10, 11, 14, and 15, with John chapter 10 being the location for two I ams. Um, so uh, the first I am is John chapter 6, the last I am is John chapter 15. So I think I've covered that quite well. Um, given you an extra Easter egg, if you like, with the um, discovery of Ron Wyatt um, that I believe to be true. I believe that um, he found the Ark of the Covenant and that the blood um, that he found was Jesus' blood. And it's theoretically possible because Jesus would have just, um, it would have been a miracle taking place, taking place with the amount of blood pouring out of Jesus um, on the cross. In the same way that he fed the 5,000, um, he multiplied the bread, he multiplied the fish. So, uh, so bleeds red wave is the mnemonic. And, um, you know, like there's other mnemonics around, like um, Roy G. Biv is, um, is one mnemonic. Um, for the rainbow, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, all the colours of the rainbow. Uh, I learned that one in chemistry. Um, I was just looking at this one here on the internet for um, parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Please excuse dear Aunt Sally. So P-E-M-D-A-S, PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. 
Um, so that's, you know, I've got other mnemonics for remembering um, certain things in scripture. So it's just um, a memory device to remember something by a mnemonic. Um, that's spelled M N E M O N I C, mnemonic. It's a, a silent M in that word if you're looking it up. So, so yeah. God bless you. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you again in another Bible study.